Hi students, I'm going to show you how to work with ranked data. Before I do that, I want to show you, in case you don't know, something that makes copying cells come in really handy, and that has to do with freezing ranges, or freezing numbers in general. So many of our functions ask us to select a range. We have a count if function that asks us to select a range. We have me average, we have meeting, we have a lot of them. So let's try this with average. I'm not going to the average these numbers when we do the analysis, but I just want to show this to you. So I'm going to average this range, and I find that it's 1.7. Now. If I wanted to keep that same range, I need to have a way to freeze those numbers. So here's what I mean. If I wanted to copy this down to here, for example, then I'm now averaging, if you look, here I was averaging C4 to C13, which is what I want, C4 to C13. C, 13. But here I'm averaging C, 9 to C, 18. And that makes no sense. It's not what I wanted. So I can actually freeze a range or, or a number by putting in a dollar sign. So I'm going to put a dollar sign right. I'm going to put the dollar sign in right before the 4 and right before the 13. And now, when I copy it here, you'll see that I have the same range. If I had also put a dollar sign in between, in b before the C's, I wouldn't just freeze the numbers, I would freeze the columns. So then if I moved over one, I would not be moving over a column. I would still be referencing back to C4 and C13. If I didn't have this C here, and I copied, it would move over to D14 and D13 because we're in the D column now. So. Just a little heads up about using dollar signs. What we're going to do for this data is we're first going to find frequencies. What this data is telling us is that people could choose between blue, pink, and yellow in terms of their favorite color. We have 10 respondents, and they ranked their favorite color with a 1 their second favorite color with a 2, and their third favorite color with a 3. So let's use the count if function to see what frequencies we have. We want to know the frequencies for each color, how many people ranked it 1, how many people ranked it 2, and how many people ranked it 3. So I'm going to do count if. I'm going to do my range. And I'm going to do 1. Now, I'm going to put the dollar sign by the 4 and by the 13. Because when I move to calculating the frequency of those who ranked it 2 and 3, I'm going to want to keep that same range. So I find that 5 people said 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks right. I'm going to copy these formulas down. I'm going to need to change the ones right there to a 2 and right there to a 3. And I have my numbers. Now, just to double check that I caught everybody, I'm going to make sure I have 10 people. Yep, I have them all. And I'm going to copy this formula over here and again over here. So 
so just just a quick check make sure we got it right does pink have three twos one two three yes do all of these add to ten yes these all add to ten as well these also should add to ten this way let's see if they do Yep, so we've got everybody accounted for. We've got solid looking data here. So those are our frequencies, but that's still quite a bit of data to look at and try to interpret. Um, we can see that blue got more ones than twos and threes. We can see pink seemed to be more people's third most favorite color. Um, I guess second and third were tied with the yellows. So we can, we can look at these data and get some idea of what's going on from it. But we can actually do a little bit better in terms of clarity if we, if we total this data. So to total this data, we need to actually assign the reverse values to the numbers. So since 1 was people's favorite color, we're going to give that 3 points. We're going to give 2 2 points, and we're going to give their least favorite color, which they ranked as 3, 1 point. So for the blue, we want to do this. Equals 5 people ranked it first, so 5 times 3, plus 3 times 2, plus... 2 times 1. We get 23 total. We'll copy these over, and this is what we get. Now again, let's double check our totals. If everybody chose a 1, 2, and a 3, so they got 3 points plus 2 points plus 1 points, that means everybody got 6 points. There's 10 people, so there should be 60 points total here. There is. So I think we did pretty well on this. Let's graph it. Blue, pink, and yellow. Very good. I want this to be yellow. How do I do that? There's a way to do this. But I will not waste you all's time in trying to figure it out right now. Mm. Here's a way to do this. But, like I said, I won't waste your time. What I do want to do is actually calculate um, the averages, so the mean. So, there's a wrong way to do this and a right way, and I'll do the wrong way first and see if you can figure out what's wrong about this. So, The wrong way I could do this is to simply do the mean, which could make a lot of sense because people did rank these 1, 2, 3, so why can't we just take the means of this? 
And when we do this, because it makes sense to us, and we do it, and we get look, get looking at our data, and we think, well, this is kind of weird because the mean of yellow is highest, but yellow was ranked the lowest. The mean of blue is the lowest, but blue was ranked the highest. So after we give some thought to this and we see what might have gone wrong, that's when we might remember that, oh, we reversed them. Blue is ranked 1 up here, or the top one is ranked 1 up here, um, but that means we gave them 3 points. So actually, to get our proper mean, we're going to take the total and divide it by the end size. So we've got 2.3, 1.9, and 1.8. So we'll get rid of these. And we see that these are our means. And we could also report these, report these in our report. So the fact that it would have been so easy to do it this way for some students, maybe not for you, um, is why at every step we look back and we go slow and we check and we check and we check and see if things make sense. It's the same reasons that I did this. The same reasons that when I did the formulas the first couple times, I went back and counted. So analysis needs to be really quite slow so that we, so that we continually check back every new step. Does this make sense? Does it make sense? All right. Am I going to be able to do this? Format data point. All right, formatting data point. Series one point. It's not exactly pink, but we're better. Yellow. Format data series. Don't want to do that. Format data point. Ha! I knew I could do it. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Let me know if you have questions.